Welcome to the Upholsters Marketplace Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast today. Uh, today, with everyone hunkered down, including our marketplace and the COVID-19 crisis, we're going to talk uh, to a marketing expert about the types of things we can do uh, during uh, this, uh, this shutdown for everybody. And would like to welcome to the show, Justin Lambert. Hey, thanks welcome, for having me. Justin. Yeah, you got it. Uh, so tell, uh, tell everybody about what you do for a living, please. Sure. I am a marketing communications consultant and specializing specifically in content marketing for small businesses. So basically, my job is to help small businesses gain visibility, uh, establish a brand identity, generate leads, and eventually boost revenue. So uh, during normal times, what's the typical type of uh, advice and work that you're giving uh, small brands and businesses? Well, obviously it's different for every business, but most of my advice for most small businesses comes down to the fact that 80 to 90 percent of any active investment you're making in marketing should be online at this point. And the reason for that is that most consumers buying journey occurs online at this point, or at least the lion's share of it does. So uh, a lot of small businesses, unfortunately, are still investing quite a bit of time and effort and money into offline uh, marketing strategies that really aren't all that effective anymore, or certainly not as effective as their online counterparts could be. Um, digital marketing, on the other hand, is not only uh, effective, but it's actually measurable so that you can optimize how effective it is. You can actually make it better over time. And it's also far less expensive than a lot of other marketing strategies when you get down to terms of cost per lead or the cost to obtain a new customer. So I spend a lot of time helping small businesses to alter their thinking about their marketing strategies and really focus a lot on where the customers actually are uh, looking for the kind of products or uh, services that they offer. When I mentioned to a couple of our uh, furniture customers, our upholstery customers, that we're going to be doing this podcast, they immediately shot back to me, uh, well, you know, we're, we don't sell on e-commerce. You know, we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're furniture. We're not uh, selling stuff on Amazon. Um, so how, how is this relevant to furniture companies that are selling? A lot of them are selling through more traditional sales channels. Yeah, that's something that I hear a lot of, and it, it makes perfect sense. Uh, when you first look at it, the assumption being, if I'm not selling something online, I don't need all of these online marketing methods to get people to my site to buy something. But the reason that those, uh, small businesses that are still using more traditional sales methods should still be very interested in digital marketing is because where customers are going right now to search for a particular product or a service that they need, they're going first to a search engine like Google, or they may be going to Facebook and uh, checking out what opinions or what ex experiences their friends have had. So that's really the first place that people are going. And there's a lot of other businesses out there, you know, the competition that you're uh, concerned about, they may already be online and they're the ones that are found. And if you're not also there, if you don't show up in search, for instance, or you don't have any presence on Facebook, then essentially your business doesn't exist as far as that new customer who's searching there is concerned. And then the second point, or the second step in the process, once you're actually found, then a lot of times these customers are doing 80% of their research activity and that's 80% of their buying journey online. So whatever presence you do have out there, whether it's your own website or a Facebook page, anything like that, it actually needs to do the job of convincing these people to get as far as calling you or walking into your store. And if that doesn't happen, then they're probably going to go somewhere else that has uh, achieved that purpose of convincing them that it's worth doing business with them. That makes a lot of sense. Um, 
Now, we're talking now during a, a, a complete shutdown, and, and of course, with furniture in particular, things have slowed down. So you, does it make sense for furniture companies to be talking about marketing uh, during this COVID-19 shutdown? So that's tough to answer because obviously there's a delicate balance there. Um, now, there's no question under the current circumstances that loud in-your-face promotions are going to seem obnoxious and really tone deaf uh, while so many people are, for instance, out of work or facing the very real possibility of losing their jobs. Uh, most small companies are maybe closed for the moment or their work has been greatly reduced. So those kind of in-your-face promotional messages are not going to be met well right now. But at the same time, promotion is only one aspect of effective marketing. So I would submit that now is the perfect time for furniture and upholstery companies to focus on the non-promotional side of marketing. So that would be going back to the basics of, for instance, making sure that your website is search optimized, making sure that you have a social media presence on the various channels where your audience is and making sure that that's optimized, um, enhancing the look and feel of your website, and especially to relationship building right now through things like uh, emailing your customers through an email list or uh, engaging with people on social media. Those are all aspects of digital marketing that don't have to be promotional at all. And right now is the perfect time to do that, not only because everybody is currently you know, in need of connection, we're, we're trying to connect with each other in times when we can't get together in person, and uh, many people are looking for some normalcy in their lives when so much about our lives has been turned upside down. So it's really a perfect opportunity for small businesses to take advantage of that um, opportunity we have before us. And, and not just that those activities are gonna be beneficial, but also a lot of small business owners and employees have a lot of extra time on their hands right now. And that's time that otherwise may not have been able to be invested in something like uh, updating the content on your website. But now's a perfect time to go ahead and do that. You mentioned uh, you mentioned email and you mentioned a website. Um, so if I'm if I'm wanting to work on marketing right now as a small business, what are uh, the types of platforms that you're advising your clients to work with? Um, basically, there there's the point of having a website of your own. Um, I, I try to stress that a lot because there are a number of small businesses and I've seen quite a few in the upholstery and furniture industry, uh, smaller furniture manufacturers, designers that rely almost completely on a Facebook page and that's all. And um, there is a lot of positive benefits to rely on a Facebook page, but there's also a lot of potential risks there that many people may not realize. So. I do encourage a lot of my, um, all of my customers to establish a website and web presence of their own that they have full ownership and control over. And then the social media side of things is, is vitally important now as well. Um, right now in the upholstery and furniture industry, the three most popular and most effective social channels in order are Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. Um, all three of those kind of lend themselves to the visual aspect of what upholsters and furniture makers are doing. Um, they can show off the before and after images of the work that they've done. There's just a lot of really great engagement in those channels. Uh, but we don't want to forget about some other channels as well. LinkedIn uh, company pages would be an excellent way to show kind of the professional side of things. And YouTube as well is something that we don't want to forget about because video has proven itself to be incredibly effective for engaging an audience. Um, even a very brief video can do uh, far better in converting somebody from a casual visitor to a uh, prospect or even a customer than a lot of text can do. That's excellent. That's excellent. Um, any other as we wrap up, anything else you can think of for for um, boutique and independent upholsters that you would advise for them and their branding, especially right now in this COVID-19 crisis? Yeah, one of the things that's definitely important to think about um, is that 
the times that we're living in are kind of unprecedented. I mean, we hear that word a lot because we've never dealt with anything like this before. And as a result, nobody really knows exactly how to go about it. So we know that it would be uh, possibly offensive. It, it would be a turn off to some people to um, have any kind of a promotional message like what we were discussing earlier. And we also want to be careful that we're not taking advantage of the situation, even inadvertently, by perhaps trying to promote some sort of uh, service or product that we're doing under the COVID-19 coronavirus label when really it's just a promotion of our own uh, activities or our own products. We have to be really careful and delicate about that because it, it's, po it's possible to kind of step over that line and maybe not even realize it. Something else that I've seen that um, is kind of unfortunate and, and we really need to be careful of on social media, especially because it can spread so quickly, is small businesses taking the time now to kind of vent their frustrations about how this whole situation has affected them. Uh, for instance, by maybe shaming customers who were suddenly unable to pay for finished work or shaming suppliers who couldn't fulfill an order as quickly or effectively as they used to. Uh, these are real problems that small businesses are no doubt dealing with, but I think what really needs to be, what we all really need to remember is that while this situation affects everybody differently, it is affecting everyone. And if at this point we vent our frustrations and it spreads on social media and we get a bad reputation because of that, that's going to last far beyond any other ramifications of this situation because people are going to remember that and it's, it could very uh, much affect your business down the road. So I'm definitely letting my clients know uh, to be careful about that situation. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So Justin Lambert with words that begin with you marketing, thanks for your time. And thanks for your advice. We, we appreciate it very much. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. Thanks for listening to the Upholsters Marketplace podcast. Please subscribe, share, and give us a review if you liked what you heard. We'll be back really soon with our next episode.